Welcome back to the Marching Health audio experience. I'm Dr. Elliot Cleveland, physical therapist and founder of Marching Health. And I have Molly Favre here from the Crossman Color Guard and most recently Tarpon Springs as well. Molly, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Introduce yourself. Um, like I said, I'm Molly Favre. I um, currently am designing with the Crossman and I uh, recently moved down to Tampa, Florida, uh, where I also work with Tarpon Springs High School. Um, that's a fairly new thing, just literally last year. Uh, so we've been in Tampa. We're actually trying to move out of Chattanooga at the moment and get all of our things down there completely. Um, but yeah, I uh, did high school color guard, went to Pope High School, grew up in Marietta, Georgia, and graduated from Kennesaw State University. Um, I actually had a minor in dance there and a major in um, communications, uh, specifically in PR. And then, gosh, did some independent color guard. Um, spent a lot of time with Paramount, still do. I love them so much. Uh, marched five years with Paramount. I did a drum corps at Glassman, my age out, 2012. And then um, I did a season with Crown Guard in 2010 before they no longer had a Winter Guard program <laughs> after that. Um, so yeah, kind of bounced around, but that's, that's me in a nutshell, at least as a performer. <laughs> yeah, you have a very unique skill set, in my opinion, in the color guard realm, because it's not just dance. You have a lot of graphics and a lot of artists and in you. So tell us a little bit about where that started in the drum corps world and in your own personal journey in school and what you've learned. Sure, I, I kind of, I've always been interested in art. Um, I've loved painting, I love drawing. I've always loved, um, I kind of dove into graphics uh, in high school randomly. I had to take a graphic arts course just to kind of finish all my credits. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I ended up really enjoying it and I ended up just teaching myself. Um, and so then I kind of dove into the drum corps thing. Uh, I went to, I started working at Crown um, in 2011 and I uh, was a merchandise manager. Um, I also, I've always worked in retail and I loved retail. So I was like, well, let's try this in drum corps. I've always wanted to do it. And um, that was a lot of fun. I was, I met a lot of people. Um, I was exposed to a lot of um, just the activity. That was really the first time I was ever on the road or like really seeing it live all the time, constantly. And so I, I actually tried to like, dive into um the design aspect of stuff by kind of just like peeking over you know keith or leon's shoulder and just kind of watching the process of how they put shows together and how they you know how they edit on the road and how they put all these programs and things and you know like it was just great to learn just on the road just you know while i was also doing a little bit of merchandising and then um they handed me a camera one day and they're like, why don't you take some photos? And I was like, sure. I love, you know, I love photo editing. You know, I can do this too. So I, I started taking, I started doing photography for them and dove into the social media stuff for them. And with the show being Rockstar that year, I really kind of learned how important it was to make the students really feel like celebrities. And the thing that they loved was that you know, they legitimately feel like rock stars all the time. They're like, that's me on the internet. You know, that's me on Facebook. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of where it all started, I guess you could say. Yeah, um, you were really on the front end of the whole social media wave in Trump Corps, which is really cool in my opinion. I mean, when you and I were going through, we had to watch YouTube videos or get on one of the, um, you know, equipment websites and see if there was a member on there that we could relate to. And you were one of the first ones to be, and that whole arrow was really when we started to put a lot of young people out there and make them feel like rock stars. So that year was, I feel like, perfect for you and perfect for your skill set and really helped shape what you've done since then. Yeah. And I, I do, I just, I love so many parts of it, you know, like, um, costuming, imagery, character roles, you know, color spectrum or color, um, color coordination, like all that stuff. Like I just, I was always so intrigued by all of it. 
And so it was actually, you know, like I was on the road for, you know, merchandising or social media, but I was also able to like really expand on the design side of stuff and really learn from the best of the best, like on the road. And that was really cool. I think that also helped me a lot in the long run, you know, see how to do things and how, um, I don't know, just, just the one-on-one -on -one was really cool. Yeah. Take that hat. And then also talk about how, what would you say to band directors and color guard members as far as teaching them how to become rock stars on their own and feel like celebrities? Um, I would say, I mean, like, I think it's super, super important that, cause we're at the top of our, of our activity, you know, DCI, WGI, that's like, that's like our NFL, you know, <laughs> of the marching arts. So it's like, we don't have, um, the ESPNs of the world, like we have to do that on our own and really make these kids feel like they are the best in the world. They're the best of the activity. And, you know, so I, I'm constantly like showing them off because, <laughs> you know, some, some of them will do it and some of them won't, some of them will do it on their own. But I, you know, I think it's cool to be like, you know, showcase all of our, our stars that we have all the time, whether it's, you know, how you know great they are at choreography or how great they are at a skill or you know like just I don't know kind of brag about them <laughs> how do you get that confidence out of young people especially shy ones that haven't necessarily been in a performing spotlight before how do you build them up so they feel comfortable being a celebrity it's honestly finding finding anything that they're very very good at like whether it's you know, God, you're so good at, you're so good at catching port. Like, gosh, have you, have you ever watched yourself catch a port? Like, it's so silly, but like, I remember, you know, it's almost like some kids aren't used to being complimented. Like they kind of get, they are, they see somebody who's very, very good. And there's like, there's no way that's what I look like. And it's just finding the little things in every student and showcasing it any way you can, you know, to make them feel like, you know, they're they're worthy of being these like uh winter guard marching arts celebrities like i don't know how to describe it but i think i, I don't know i like finding little niches and and i i try to run around the field like you know at crossman and i'm like you look so good today you know or even if it's like i love your show hair so much i can't stop talking about it or i can't stop looking at it like i you just you know what i mean like yeah i want to be on the field with you so you tell me you love my show hair. <laughs> I do. And I just, I'm like, guys, you have to feel like a million bucks. You know, like I told them last year at Crossman, you know, they're like, I said, I don't want little hair. I want you to go to the extreme. I want you to find the coolest like hair you can possibly find on the internet. And I want you to try it. And I want you to make it like a big deal. Like I said, don't give me just that little butterfly clip in the back. You know, and so then they come into spring training and they're like, oh, it's all up here. It's like, it's insane. And I'm like, I'd rather tone it down than have to force you to make it bigger. <laughs> I love that. So you were designing and creating, you know, this product from the field up. Now, what's the opposite perspective of that? How did educators and how did band directors teach that top down? Meaning, like, what do they do design wise to put their students in an environment to be successful, whether it's uniforms or um, show features. What do you think? I think it's important to work big to small. Um, you know, like I think like big picture to small picture, I think is super, super important. I think some people get like kind of scatterbrained and it makes everything turn into like, uh, you know, like craziness on the field. And I can kind of use um, Lydia as an example from last year. You know, we, we started off with this costume um, that was just, you know, it was kind of like the basic form of it, like the dress. And, you know, once we finally put it on her, you know, we put her on the field, we're like, now what does she need? She needs a headpiece. She needs all these accessories, this cape. She needs a horn. She needs, she needs a corset. She needs, you know, tall boots, not small little jazz shoes. Like she needs like, you know what I'm saying? You, We went this way with it to really narrow down the detail of her and her look. And um, I think that's really important. I think sometimes, I think some band directors, some instructors, some designers, you know, if that works for you, that's fine. But 
my suggestion <laughs> is to work big to small. Yeah, and I, I know I'm definitely guilty of getting caught in the details and losing some of that big picture effect with all right. this. Right. I think I think that could help a few people. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your own performing and health journey and what you've learned along the way from going from being a you know really heavy participant in WGI to trying to do drum corps and now what you teach your students. Um, I uh, personally I was always an indoor person. <laughs> I always really loved um, Winter Guard. You know I did do marching band obviously I did color guard and marching band but um, I've always had kind of an issue like body wise you know like I kind of I've always been really insecure about how how small I was in high school and so that unfortunately kind of set me back from doing drum corps um and the irony now is you know there's always you know these people who are you know trying to make sure that they're in fit and they're in shape and they're you know they're like oh I, I see that uniform I know it's going to be I I can't I won't look good in it there's no way and my theory is I I want you to feel strong, not small, because I had that personal issue of wishing I could have could have done more time because I just couldn't physically handle it. And um, you know, I, I I told I told my kids last year, it's like I I just want you to I want you to be powerful and ready for a really hard summer. And that does not mean you're gonna lose weight. I want you to get muscular. I want you to be you know, strong and, you know, all these things, because they got really fearful of the costume at one point. And I said, you can't do that. I said, you will look like a million bucks in this. And I would not put you in that uniform if I didn't think you could. And, um, and I think they sold it like hotcakes to the universe. Like, you know, like, I, th I really do think like, there's beauty in everybody. And I think that that was truly showcased last summer for us that, you know, it's not about being teeny tiny and itty bitty. It's, you know, it's, it's about finding, you know, strength in your own body. And, and I, I learned that, you know, I, I actually, I'm learning from them, honestly, probably more than they're learning from me because I, I, I see their sense of confidence, you know, and especially last year, that confidence was just beaming. And I hope it showed like, a lot of other, you know, females or males in the activity that, you know, doesn't take being tiny to be, you know, beautiful. Like these girls are like in immaculate shape and, you know, and they're all different, all totally different body types. Right. And, Absolutely. And I feel like we all have our own insecurities about our body, whether it's too big or too small. So how did, how do you plan to, you know, be able to continue to instill that in your members? I, 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 I always say like, you know, they, if, if anybody comes to me and says, I'm just afraid to put my student in that because I'm afraid that they won't feel good about it. Then, then I say, you need to help them feel good about it. You know, and I, I, it goes back to the celebrity thing. You just gush on them. Like I, I tell them all the time, like you are the most beautiful people I've ever met. You're the most beautiful color guard. You're the most beautiful, like blah, 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 blah. And it's, it's all true. Like it's, and I'm not just doing it to blow smoke up their butts. Like I'm really saying like, you need to know how, you know, amazing you all look all the time. And it's, you know, I'm giving you some like sparkles here and there, but I'm not doing a whole lot. It's, it's just naturally you. And so, you know, if, if they're ever fearful of their guard members being in a certain costume, they need to just figuring out a way to make them feel like, you know, no matter what, they look fantastic in what they're wearing. You tell them that, you know, they may not do it on their own. So you have to guide them. You know, you're a role, you're not just their instructor. You're also a role model for them in life. You know, it's more than just color guard. We talk about that all the time. Um, and so helping them and guiding them, you know, to feel like a million bucks, super, super important. You know, I, I don't, pick and choose who to, you know, put on social media. Cause they all, they all look like, you know, a 10 all the time. They always look awesome. And they know that. I love it. So what, if, if you could pick one, what season as a performer for you really helped you personally make the jump in confidence? Um, 
gosh, I, I think my time at Paramount was was really really awesome. Like with the, the all different sorts of uniforms we were in, all different types of you know images we had. I kind of had a double duty job as a performer, but also as you know, I would I would help Rick a lot with hair and makeup and and stuff like that for the performers um, throughout all the years there, and I still do to this day. And so, like, our biggest thing is always, like, make them, you know, what will they look the best in? What's 100% the best way to make them look and feel and not worry about it and not getting in their way? And so, you know, when when I started to, like, not just look at myself, but also have to look at the other performers and help them, you know, look and feel a certain way, I don't know. It's something about that helped me because mm -hmm. I was helping other people. And so, I don't know, it was just my time at Paramount. I just felt my confidence, like with Rick and Andrea, like they just really, they really make you feel like a superstar all the time. <laughs> you know, so we, over time, I just, I, I don't know, I loved working with them and under them and for them. And in my time there, I could really see a change in myself because I was learning to appreciate myself throughout those years there. I don't know. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of blah, blah, blah to me, but. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a <laughs> personal growth over a journey. And that's, you know, really where you see it in your students. When you get a ninth grader, it's that journey from them all the way to 12th grade. Right. At the end of the tunnel, they realize I was somewhere along the way. Molly taught me this skill and just repeated it and repeated it and repeated it. And now I feel strong. I feel great about myself as a person. Yeah, and they and and Rick always does. He always made us like you were. You guys are ten. You look amazing. You look this, that, and the other, and like you just feel powerful as a whole group. And then you start. You stop worrying about yourself. You stop looking at yourself so much, and you start looking more at like the whole picture. And I'm. I don't know. I just in that time, my time there, I really started to find more confidence in myself because I felt like I was in a really confident room with a huge confident family of people that cared and loved for me you know cared cared for me and loved me you know no matter how I looked and you know like I don't know <laughs> so if you're a color guard instructor especially you know a new color guard instructor and you've never told your kids they look like a 10 do it before their next show and they will totally transform yeah and it's so important to to not I don't, I don't mean to like Beat, you know beat them down on it but like it's so important for your students to know how important it is to look on the floor and off the floor and you know not just taking for granted that you know oh, our show's done it doesn't matter what I look like after this like no you gotta put your jacket back on fix your hair up because somebody is walking around that that gym or that arena or that football field and they're looking at you whether it's like a middle schooler looking up to a high schooler or a or an independent performer looking at you know the high schoolers that are around them i don't it could be any any way but you know somebody's always looking up to you or looking at you or judging you <laughs> or judged constantly <laughs> you know? absolutely i mean i was a snare drummer so our thing was you set whenever you take a break it doesn't matter if you're a rehearsal or if you are you know out performing to the middle schoolers, you put your drums down exactly the same because you want to look professional, even when you are on break, look professional and act professional. So that's the exact same concept just for the color guard world. And we really like, it sounds silly, but we really pushed that at Paramount. Like we had like the Paramount way of how we fold our jackets, you know, logo sides always up. If it's not on you, it's perfectly placed next to you. And, you know, cause it's, it, you create that mentality of not perfection, but just, you know, being professional. And, you know, then you can, then you can push yourself onto the floor and say, what's a professional way to recover if something happens, you know, as opposed to, you know what I mean? An immature way to handle that. And when you're, when you're constantly handling things in a professional way, it uh, kind of gets stuck in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You just went top to bottom from big picture, think like a celebrity, think, make your kids feel like celebrities. What's the little thing they need to do every day? Fold their jackets the same. Take pride in how they look 
And then it's so much easier as an instructor when you do go try to teach them how to look like a rock star. Mm -hmm. They already have done the little things to set themselves up for that cue that you gave them. Yeah. When you care, when you care about yourself off the floor, you'll, you'll really care about yourself on the floor and, and it shouldn't, you know, like, you know, this past season with, with Tarpon, you know, they would laugh at me because I would constantly be running around with hairspray or lipstick or like, you know, I'm pointing to a mom because I'm like, I need, you know, this, this button's falling off, like something. And we're just like, it's such small details, but I'm like, you know, let me worry about that so that you can worry about your show, but you should totally understand that everything is important and everything has to be world-class and, you know, it can't just be the twirls. It's got to be you know, the setup, the character image, the, you know, the performer's hair, it's all got to be a 10. It's always at all times. And, and like this past winter, you know, like, I mean, it's, it feels like a lot of babysitting, but I mean, it's a lot of like, just, you know, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Cause I just, I love, I love making them feel like million bucks and they, they should. And I think they learned a lot from, from me for that, that, you know, on that topic, I think this past winter, because I was harping on it so much, you know, they're like, we've just never had to worry as much about it as, you know, now you're here and now you're bugging me about my hair all the time. And I said, let that be my job. Let me bug you about that. You know, you know, let's, let's let Janine and Tyler clean all the twirls and tell you, tell you you're late to count six. And I'm just going to make sure you look like a thousand bucks all the time. And they're like, okay, <laughs> now go buy the right lipstick. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome advice. I mean, that's, it's thorough. It makes sense. It makes the young people be able to latch onto it. So thank you so much for all of those tips. Um, now I want to go just double check that I make, I look like a 10 today. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for your time, Molly. Um, I really appreciate you sitting down with me and getting to know you a little bit more. Yeah, no, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.